hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, a gift box for your playing cards. Well, we all know that friend or have a friend that loves to play cards. And as a gift idea, what better gift for them than a wooden box to house their deck of cards? So, we're going to start off with a piece of wood that I found in the rack, and it's a piece of flame box elder. Well, this is a piece of flame box elder that I found up in the rack, and it's roughly six by eight by inch and a half thick. Now, we don't need all of this stock to make a playing card box, but what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to take it over to the jointer, I'm going to flatten out this one side, and then I'm going to give it one edge, uh, adjacent face rather, flatten that and get this corner to exactly 90 degrees. Well, now that we have this milled flat and an adjacent side at exactly 90 degrees, we're going to cut a piece that is 4 inches by 5 inches. Well, here is our piece of flame elder, and truth be told, this is a little oversized for what we need. But I'm kind of giving myself a little bit of wiggle room here for design changes and that sort of thing. Well, the first thing that we want to do is I want to take this over to the bandsaw, and I want to resaw this, and I want to take off a slice that is about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly 3 sixteenths. It could be a little more, it could be a quarter inch, it could be a little less, whatever you like. But I'm going to choose the 3 sixteenths uh, size. So let's head over to the bandsaw and get that chunk cut off of this. <laughs> Well, the next thing you want to do is reset your fence to make a cut that will be between 5 eighths at its minimum or 3 quarters at the maximum. 5 eighths will easily house a deck of cards, but I like a little bit of extra play. So we're going to cut a 3 quarter slab off of the same piece of box elder. <laughs> And then with the last remaining piece, we're going to reset the fence back to our 3 16 to a quarter inch. And we're going to cut this uh, the same way we have the other ones. We're going to resaw it to that dimension. Well, you should now have three pieces of your stock two that are about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, and one that's anywhere between 5 eighths and 3 quarters. You want to try to keep them aligned as best you can, but for now we're going to put one of the 3 sixteenths pieces aside, and we're going to draw out our, um, I guess our recess for our cards. So we want to come in three quarters of an inch from each side. Just like this. And if you've done that, you should end up with an opening in the middle that's two and a half by three and a half which is pretty much the standard size for a deck of cards. So let me just check that here and see what we've got. 
we've got two and a half by three and a half. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna drill a blade entry hole and in your center slab, we're gonna cut this hole very carefully out. Now, before you go on any further, we just want to make sure that a deck of cards fits in our opening. You'd hate to go through all this trouble and find out that it doesn't fit. But we've got a nice snug fit there. There is a little bit of play, but that's just fine. I don't mind that. So the cards fit and we can move on to the next step. If you've paid attention to how they line up, you should be able to put them back together exactly as they were cut apart. And you can see there where it allows us to line up grains to make it look just a little bit better. So what we're going to do now is the mating surfaces being this one and this one and this one and this one, we're going to sand them flat. You don't want to remove a lot of material, so I would suggest the best way to sand them flat would be to use a piece of sandpaper that's glued to a piece of three quarter inch MDF and just lightly hand sand to take those saw marks away. Now, once you have them sand it to your liking so that things can be put back together, what we're going to do is choose which one you want for the bottom, which one of these thinner slabs, and we're going to glue it back on to the piece that we've cut out. So you want to try your best to align the edges so that the grain lines up, especially for a grain that's as spectacular as this flame box elder. So <clears throat> I'm going to glue this bottom back on and then we're going to set it aside to dry. Well, our box is dried up and we have some uneven edges here where the bottom slid just a little bit as we were gluing it up. And that's okay because this half an inch or sorry, three quarters of an inch extra that was left here, we're actually going to trim this down to make this box a little less uh, bulky, shall we say. So what we're going to do is take it over to the table saw and I'm going to trim it up until, I don't know, maybe there's about a quarter of an inch of material left here on the outside of the box. You just have to remember that if you want the grain to line up, every piece that you cut off of your bottom box, you also need to cut off of your lid. So I'm going to take this over to the table saw. I don't think you need a video of me trimming it. And we're just going to trim it down to size. Well, I think the next step now in our project is to mortise or mortise in, <laughs> say that 10 times fast, mortise in for these tiny little hinges. And these hinges, of course, will be set right there like that. And we will use them in order to close our lid. Well, I have the mortises cut and it's time to put the hinges in. And honestly, this is probably the most bizarre method I've ever used to put hinges in, but I'm going to use a glue gun with some construction adhesive in it. And I don't want to put a lot in there. Um, this is a small box. It's very light duty. I don't know if the construction uh, hot glue will hold it or not. 
I may end up epoxying these hinges in. What the problem was is that I was going to use eustachian pins to hold it, but I don't have any that have heads that are big enough um, where they're not pulling through the holes. These are such tiny hinges. And I fear that if I use too big of a, of a eustachian pin, it's going to interfere with the operation. So we're gonna try to use hot glue. If it doesn't work, well, you know what? At least we tried, right? So a little bit of hot glue on there and we're gonna just smoosh the hinge down into the hot glue, being careful, of course, because it's called hot glue for a reason. So once we get that hinge in place and the glue is set, we can trim the glue up afterwards with an X-Acto blade or what have you. So we'll do the same thing on this side and we'll see if it's going to hold. I honestly don't know. Sometimes you got to try new stuff. There we go. Look at that. Okay, so we're going to let that cure and then when we get that cured, we're going to put a little bit of hot glue on the top half of the hinge and we're going to set our lid down on top of it just like that. Well, just as an FYI, the hot glue failed miserably. So <laughs> that's okay. Stuff happens. We're going to use some screws here. I found some number zero by one quarter inch brass screws over in my hardware area there. So I'm going to screw these in instead and hope for better results. Boy, my big hands were not meant to deal with small stuff like this. But we'll get it. There we go, finally. <laughs> All right, there's one screw out of eight. So I'll carry on screwing this in, and hopefully when I come back, I... Uh, I will have this lid put on the way that I want it. Well, the screws worked much better. The hinge works perfectly now. And we just need to sand around it and take off some of these sharp edges that are on the edges of the box. Well, I wanted to do something a little different for the closure. And this is basically, it's just a wooden bead. And I've just pushed a double loop through the hole in the bead, looped it back around itself and tied a knot. And this just hooks in place here as the closure. Now you can slide it off the box if you want, or you can, leave it on there, whatever you like, but it's just a simple loop and a simple bead. And I just thought, you know, it was kind of artsy and I kind of liked the way that it looked on there. So I thought I'd try it and you know what, I'm gonna stick with it. So there's one more thing that I'd really like to do to this box and I'm a little skeptical to do it because I've come this far, but you know what? If we're going for artsy, then we might as well go all the way artsy now, shouldn't we? instead of just going, uh, you know, halfway. So, I th you know what? I think it's time to get the wood burner out.
And there you have it. A playing card gift box. Guys, there's a million different ways to make this project. You don't have to do it in layers and glue it together like I did. You could make a normal box. You could 45 the sides. You could add splines. You could have a sliding lid. You could have a lid that attaches with magnets. I chose the hinges. And in hindsight, maybe it didn't quite work out the way I thought it would. But yet, I still like the way it turned out. And I like that um, like rope closure with the wooden bead. I think it suits. The wood burning is just an addition which makes it something else that it's that extra little element and if you were making a bunch of these um, for gifts wood burning may not be on that list because it is rather time consuming but the choice is yours you could flock the inside you could do whatever you want to this box the possibilities are endless you could make it so that it holds more than one deck you could have it for poker chips you could change it up however you like. Species of woods, different laminations will give it a completely different look altogether. And how you actually assemble and build and design your box is 100% up to you. Guys, this has been a really fun project. It's nice to get away from some of the other stuff and just do like something simple like a little box. Not every project has to be this crazy, you know, extravagant build. Sometimes the little small ones can be just as fun and just as educational. If you haven't already, guys, please like and subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss notifications of future shows. I really want to thank you for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. I hope it has inspired you to try to make your own gifts. And I honestly hope that you're going to join me next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.